Hello again, I am Blunty, framed up unusually wide and unusually low, because today I get to unbox something significant, large, and it came in a big box too. Thread Ripper, unlocked, unrestrained, uncompromising, and um, unbelievably... Uh, delivered in a great big... Uh, I'm not sure this is a Pelican brand case, but Pelican-like case, travel case, complete with handle and wheels on the damn thing and everything. So, I can't actually review this yet. There's still a review embargo happening on Threadripper, uh, which is good news because this just arrived today, but I do get to unbox it today. So what I'm going to do is unbox it. And considering the care of which they've put this together, I haven't even opened it yet. I'm doing it fresh live with you guys. It's probably going to be, I don't know, sound music or lights or something that happens when you open these things when you know companies do that from time to time with their big products when they send reviewers stuff that's just presented a little bit more elaborately than the retail product is so i've no idea what's inside here at all actually that's a lie i do know there are two threadripper cpus in here the 1950x and 1920x aside from that the box seems a bit big for those so let's open it up if i can how do these latches work ah, got it all right so doo -doo 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 -doo. Alright, so nothing... Oh wait, 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 wait. I don't know whether the camera's picking that up or not. No, that's not the light reflexings. Those are actually... There's lights underneath there. Where's the... Ah, oh, there it is. Ah, uh, you can make them blink if I hit the little leaf switch underneath the lid here. Alright, so... Uh... <laughs> Turn it up. This way. Wow, they really didn't have video reviewers in mind when they decided to put this box together, did they? They only want to show cameras to... Tilt it up this, I'll hold the, hold the, if you're going to go to all this presentation trouble, at least think about people who have to unbox these things on video, would you? AMD, would you? Just a little bit? Okay, anyway. So, first thing I'm going to grab is some sort of plaque. Ooh! The little plaque thingy there, it has a thread ripper inside there. Presumably that's a non-working sort of engineering reject sample or something like that. I've actually got a um, NVIDIA chip just like it somewhere around here from their, uh, from their GTX 10 series line. It comes apart. Hey, oh, it's all magnetically. It's magnetically put together. Clever, lovely. Whoops. So now, when I want to show off Threadripper on camera, I have a chip that I can handle without worrying about my electrostatic discharge from my magnetic personality destroying the chip accidentally. I can even give it a lick. Um, I didn't actually look at them. That was just a stunt for the video because, oh wait, how do we, let's just go back together. Put it in there. Oh, other way. This, no. That, uh, so, and, haha! -ha. You know what I want to do with that? Once I build my final Threadripper system, and I do hope that I get to hang on to at least one of these chips so I can make a system for myself, I might sort of try and mount this in or on top of the case and get some LED lights underneath it or through it or something like that, so it can just be a sort of showpiece on or in the case. Because I reckon if you, uh, yeah, you put a bank of LED lights under there, RGB lights, shine it up through there, that's going to look awesome! So, in, yeah, here we are. Thread ripper and piece of cardboard and thread ripper. Two thread rippers and there we go. Now you can see the lights in there. See that? There. Shame of it is, I don't think they're actually going to let me keep this case because I only have a fistful of days with these thread rippers, but we'll have to pack them back up and send them on to the next review because there are very few review samples on the ground in Australia at the moment, apparently. So, <sighs> I'll have to give mine up sooner rather than later but at least i get first dibs at unboxing the fresh ones so i now that we have the big case out of the way i'm going to reframe the camera so i can sit down at my desk and do this unboxing properly for the rest of this Alrighty, so we have the 1950x and the 1920x i think that's right there with the actually it doesn't matter how you, you wouldn't know you can't see the labels so presumably these are packaged up much the same so i don't know let's do the big boy the 1950x we'll do that one first so you will have seen this packaging already because they announced, you know, they showed off photos of the pack uh, about a week, week and a half ago or something like that. So it's really cool looking retail packaging. Aside from looking like a uh, sort of old CRT portable TV set or something, it actually opens really unusually as well. I haven't done this, I haven't even seen it done yet. They just sort of described it to me so I didn't accidentally break something. So unlock the power. Twist the thingy to unlock the power. Um, but also it says rip here. So do I rip here first or do I unlock the power first? I'm going to rip. Ooh, that's satisfying. The perforations actually tore perfectly, which doesn't always happen, but you, you know, when it does happen, it's pleasant. It's one of those tactile things. That's nothing we can get rid of that. There we go. So now, 
Ooh. That's, that was a satisfying clunk clunk. Let me do that again. Yeah. Zoom back and just. Did I. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No. Like that. Aha. Uh -huh. I was expecting it to clamshell apart, but no. Top and bottom. So now we pull that up. It is. It's just. It's almost exactly the same shape as an old cathode ray tube from a TV as well, isn't it? All right. Now. Well, we'll do this first. In the bottom here is something that has never ever come with any CPU in the history of computers, and that is a torque wrench. Now this torque wrench, if I remember the briefing correctly, is set to 1.6 or 1.8 newtons, one or the other. It is the exact amount of pressure that you uh, is required to safely install Threadripper chip. Help you keep your precious and uh, not inexpensive CPU safe. They also give you this, which is a bracket designed to mount uh, one of the most common types of uh, water blocks found in, um, I think, sort of half a dozen of the top brands of all-in-one coolers, including things like, I think they sent me a Thermaltake, yeah, they sent me a Thermaltake one along with this. So this bracket will let you use existing all-in-one water coolers on Threadripper, so you don't have to wait for you know bespoke Threadripper cooling systems to come out. You can use what's already on the market. And I did talk to the guys. Threadripper is a much much larger CPU uh, than most, but the cores themselves on that package are close enough together that an existing heatsink unit designed for the, the the current Intel's and AMD chips out there will properly cover the the heat generating components inside that package there. So ba bam. Now. Let's have a look here. What do we got else? There we go. Stickers, of course. I can whack those on the front of your case so everybody knows you've got an AMZ Threadripper in there. Now inside here is... Ooh. So I also want to sort of incorporate that into the front of a computer case somehow. You could sort of mount that in the front of it, shine some lights from beneath it because, you know, uh, where's my... I don't know. Let's use my phone. Because it does have a sort of big eyeball thing going on there, doesn't it? Can you... Uh, I don't know how well that's coming through on camera. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it's it's a waste of this awesome packaging just to, you know, unbox it once and then put it in a cupboard or throw it away or something. I feel like I want to build it into a custom case somehow. But there we are. That's the Threadripper chip itself. I mean, not really surprised we already knew what it looked like from that and also the previous shots that we were shown. So this looks like it's got a metal retaining clip around the outside here. If we can prise that off with some care, perhaps. There we go. And, and, I'm trying to be gentle here, but squeeze that, oh, there we go, so squeeze those, come on now, smooth, AMD, have I ever chat to um, some of the Apple packaging engineers, because um, they've probably got a better system in place to figure out clips, so you can see that orange stuff around the uh, resin, holding the chip inside the package. Don't pull that off. That's actually part of the complete mounting system for the Ryzen chip. You are, uh, there we are. That is your Ryzen chip. Don't remove the orange thing. It's probably mentioned somewhere in the paperwork that came with it. I was hoping they'd put a big sticker on top of it because if you remove that orange thing, you're gonna have a very bad day because it's not gonna fit in the mounting system in your motherboard anymore. I'll show you all about that in a minute, but basically it slides in to a, uh, little tray and then folds down, which means because of the incredible number of uh, contact pins there, 4,098 or some huge ridiculous, I'll put it on screen, some ridiculous number, but there's an equivalent number of tiny, tiny, tiny little pins on the motherboard that, um, you know, if you're, if you're trying to manually drop this in there, perfectly level so nothing gets squished or bent or corrupted in any way, it's, um, it could be nerve wracking. So the system they've designed to put the Threadripper chip on the motherboard helps you avoid any kind of drastic mistakes like that. So if we can, a sec, yeah, that clips back in there nice and safely too. Hey. So that's that done. Probably use that somewhere on the case as well. I don't know, what do you reckon? Put that over the reservoir or something so you can see the vom, 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 vom. See, now I desperately want to put animated lights behind the case. <laughs> so that is Threadripper. Unboxing. That's about as much as I can tell you about these things for right now. The next step, of course, is to finish building up a test system and start putting these things through their paces. So, 
If there's anything in particular you want me to try with these things, please let me know in the down below area. I'm going to leave sort of the, the hardcore chart making kind of benchmarking to some of my peers and compatriots elsewhere on YouTube and the internet at large. I I'm going to stick within my wheelhouse and find out what Threadripper is like as the, the throbbing, beating heart of a content creator's system because that's one of the real, huge, massive, incredible benefits of Threadripper as far as I'm concerned from my own personal perspective. And that is I can build a single system that has so many cores and threads that I can do things like the, the demo they showed me in LA when I went up there to get briefed on these things in the first place. So they were running a game at 1080p at 80 frames per second. It was Hitman. Um, they were streaming it through OBS, uh, 1080p, 60 frames per second stream. They were also recording that stream at the same time at a much higher bit rate. So you get a much higher quality video for you know editing or throwing up on YouTube or whatever at a later date or using for your archives or whatnot. They were also re-encoding or converting another video behind the scenes of a previous recorded stream so all that was going on lots and lots of video intensive workload going on and running the video game at the same time and it was doing it flawlessly and that is what AMD want to call mega tasking it's not just multitasking you're not just doing a few things at the same time like you've got a game and the email and maybe a chat client or something no I mean that's easy to do these days mega tasking is doing a lot of really intensive crap all at the same time to save you time because I mean it's it's it's, it's fairly edge case as far as most of you will be concerned but there are creators out there um, like I watch a few of the bigger Minecraft YouTubers for example who upload daily you know half an hour videos every single day of Minecraft stuff so they often record and and stream and encode and edit and re-encode and all that sort of stuff trying at the same time and I've heard them sort of whine about it saying oh please excuse Minecraft it's chugging along a bit today because I'm encoding a video in the background that's what this is for among other things but the things I will be looking at it for are that kind of intensive creator focused stuff and uh, I got I, I, I'm official prediction now if if AMD let me hang on to one of these things that i7 rig behind me there that ain't gonna be an i7 rig for much longer that does fine you can you know c keep up with you know AAA gaming and streaming at the same time no problem but AAA gaming and streaming and encoding video and recording videos all at the same time not so much and being able to do that would save me a lot of time and uh, time is money as they say so uh, yeah so let's whack this in a machine and find out if it even lives up to the promise that AMD have been making about this thing for a, a little while now is it actually gonna do all that stuff without breaking a sweat without bursting into flames without without crippling windows I any one way to find out we're gonna find out thanks for watching I am Blonty and we'll catch you next time Taser face! Every time I hear thread reports, taser face. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Taser face.